guys, it's your girl, Matt Cox with M.A. Couture Crafting. And yes, I have another Get Crazy video for you guys. This time, we're going to turn it up a notch. It's Valentine's Day. We are going to do some sexy pillowcases. I watched A Quilting Life a couple weeks back, and I watched Billy do his first uh, creation, and it was a pillowcase, and it was the absolute most entertaining video ever. Shout out to Billy. Kudos for trying and attempting and kind of understanding what it is to do the project as opposed to just film the project. That's awesome. Um, I was thoroughly entertained. <laughs> but I was looking at a ton of videos trying to figure out how you use directional fabric. And that's where my video differs. I wanted to be able to use directional fabric properly. And what I mean is when you make up your bed, if you're making it up properly, something that would drive me insane is if the opening of the pillowcase was not toward the outside of the bed. So <laughs> that's the way that they should go. However, when you're using directional fabric, You've only got one side that will really work. And I'm cool with that. So I just realized when you are doing, when you're giving away pillowcases or when you're making a pillow, you really want to be sure that it's directional and it's sitting right and it looks good and there's a trick to it that nobody else was talking about. I really struggled with understanding how to use directional fabric. So I'm going to go on ahead and do a blog tutorial. My blog is up. I am going to do a video and show you guys how to use directional fabric properly for making a pillowcase. And then I'm going to take this pillowcase and put it on my husband's side of the bed to see what happens. Stay tuned to see how my husband loves the outdoorsy type fabric. I think it's hilarious. And that's the name of this fabric if you want to find it. If you want to do a gag gift for your girlfriends, if you just really like this and you are down to use it, again, it's the outdoorsy type and it's by Alexander Henry, the guy with the golden bolts. I love that. Oh, all right, guys, I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye. All right, guys, I got some Alexander Sexy Man fabric. It's called the outdoorsy type and I just love Alexander Henry's prints with the guys on them. And I always thought, what am I going to do with them? So now we know. Um, what you want to do is take the salvage, put the salvage toward your belly button. If your print does not look like you can read it, like you can't read that, that's this direction. The words are up and down, like, and the guys are going this way. So we know that this is not the direction that we want to use this fabric. Your design is running perpendicular. So I am going to take it. And I'm going to fold it in half because I know that the long ways I need 44 inches. So I have purchased one and a quarter, <clears throat> one and a quarter yards of fabric of this outdoorsy type, this guy. So I'm just going to fold this guy in half. I'm going to put that fold there to the left. We are going to smooth out our fabric as best we can. And I am going to square it up at 22 inches. It's folded. I'm cutting two, I'm cutting four layers of fabric at a time. So that I know that I have 44 inches. And I don't have a huge workspace. My mat is only 36 inches, which is one yard of fabric. So what you get is what you get. So again, 22 inches. I'm letting it fall where it falls. And I'm making a standard pillow size. So which is, I want to say, standard is 27 by 44 are the measurements that you need for it. All right, so I'm going to toss this. Now, you're going to have quite a bit of fabric left over when you do this. 
I am going to actually take the selvage off so I don't even have to worry about that. And so I've just turned it. And now I can see that my selvage is over here. Selvage is where my right hand is. I'm just going to take it off. Because I know I don't need that kind of anything here. So I'm just looking to see where it all lands. Um, it looks like I can take it off at 21 and a half and not catch too much. Actually, it needs to be a little bit more. I'm just going to take it off at 21. And I will get everything for sure. Don't freak out. My fabric is folded. There's a fold here and there's a there's two folds still right there. Remember that. Okay. Four layers of fabric right now. Selvage is now gone. <clears throat> this is where it gets interesting because I need this pillow to be 27 inches this way. So I need to see 27 inches of all of this. <laughs> so I'm going to open up my fabric. Now I've got 44 inches going this way and that's too much. I can't, I know some people would put it here and then slide it. I don't have time for that kind of stuff in my life. No ma'am. We are going to fold it in half the other direction and then we're going to cut. We are going to fold it in half and then I'm going to cut my 27 inches this way. If your picture runs parallel, you just need to cut 27 inches off the bolt of fabric, and that is much easier, but then you don't have super sexy people, <laughs> so that's not fun, right? <laughs> I'm so entertained by these guys here. Oh, good, I get him. Really wanted him. So I am, it's open right here. I've got to fold up there, and I know that I need 27 inches of fabric. Oh, I'm going to cut off his head. I'm just going to get his body. I'm so excited about where this lands. All right, so I fussed with it. I've got it all kind of lined up as best I can. You want to be close, but if you're not dead on, it'll, this is pretty forgiving in regards to... It's pretty forgiving in regards to your sewing. All right, so now I have all this fabric that I will probably never use on a project. But hey, <laughs> I'm, I'm having a good time. All right. Now, because where I purchased my fabric only does quarter yard cuts, I have enough for either one of these to be the accent piece and either one to be the band, that little cuff. I really like them with the cuff. So I'm going to make this, I mean, I really like them with that accent band. You don't have to use it, but why not, right? More fabric you get to buy, and that's always a plus. I'm going to use this fabric as the cuff. So I'm going to cut this to nine, and I'm going to use this one as a little accent piece. I'm going to cut this to three inches, fold it in half, and press it. Okay, now I am just looking at this guy here and we want your three inch piece and your nine inch piece to all be the same now I know my sexy guys are 44 so they stopped at the 22 but really depending upon your the maker of your fabric you might not be able to get the full 44 if it's by the salvage so they just all need to be the same when folded so this has the folded edge right here. The folds to this fabric are here and here. Come on. And they all need to be the same. So whichever selvage comes up first, that's the one that you need to cut off. You want to keep this as long as you can, as close to 44 as you can, but you might not be able to get it 
because fabric is funky. See this? Although this is not lined up properly. Let's line you up. Can I get 20? Yeah, I can get ju Oh, no. No, I cannot. Can I? Yeah, I'm going to have to cut off more than 22. Just because of how long this salvage is, how much salvage is in there. Same here. So you just want them all to be the same. So what I think I'm going to do is put these all together and then just take a swipe at it with my ruler and rotary cutter. I'm just going to be sure they're all lined up. All right, I was able to take it off without taking off. I was able to get it to 22. I've got some salvage, but when you see how many times I sew that, we are not going to be concerned about it. Let's unroll and lay out now. I am going to put the 9 inch piece down first, right side up. Right side up. I'm going to put you out and I'm going to make room. Then we are going to do the sexy bodies. We are going to lay them out right on top. And match them up. And then we're going to press this cuff and lay this cuff on last. Okay, so we are layering now. I don't have a ton of space. Again, this is, I have a good size table, but my sewing machine is right here. So um, this is a little bit cumbersome for me and not an issue. If you were doing a king size, it would be the same amount that you need this way. You just need more going this way it'd be 36 inches as opposed to 27 but here I have pressed that right sides actually wrong sides together so the it looks like this is grunge fabric so I don't know if you can tell the difference but the wrong sides are pressed together the nine inch cuff is under here laid all out that way and then I put the sexy man fabric on top of it all out then we're going to take the unfinished raw edges right here place them on top and I'm gonna pin this all well actually I'm just gonna clip it first I'm gonna add this to the clips making sure that all three are lined up and I'm gonna clip it and do the same here Make sure all three are right there together. I can feel all the layers. I'm going to clip it. And I'm going to do the same thing all the way down. All right, now that they are all clipped together, I am going to... This is clipped. You just... There we go. I'm going to fold it up to just about that... Just about to the cuff, to the band right there. And we're going to fold this guy up all the way down, just up a little bit. And we're going to keep this nice and neat. We're going to fold it up to that area again, keeping it nice and neat. And I'm only rolling up the sexy guy fabric at this point. I'm going to roll sexy guy up one more time. It's hanging off a little bit on the left. I've got a little space over here. Now we are going to bring this cuff. Make sure again that your cuff currently is right side up because you do not want to have to fix this later. You don't have to do any seam ripping. We are going to bring up your cuff to match it and then I'm going to clip it. But not only am I going to clip it, I'm going to grab a couple of pins too. And I'm just going to put a pin in between the clips. 
just to be sure that both the front and the back that whole sandwich is getting caught you want that whole sandwich to get caught yes it's a lot of layers of fabric but this is such a cool method I love it okay so I'm throwing a pin in there I'm gonna come up over here and I'm gonna clip you we're gonna add this to the the sandwich and over here we're just going to bring it up and I'm making sure that I'm not catching sexy man in this sexy man like the rolled up part you don't want to get the rolled up part in any of this otherwise you will have a mess I'm going to pull you up and catch you in this clip perfect and I'm going to drop another pin right here And we'll do the same thing. Grab this guy in this. Make sure it's all lined up. And put a pin in here. Now we're going to take our burrito, sausage, whatever you want to call it. And we are going to sew. We're going to reinforce at the top. We're going to reinforce at the bottom. Okay, so I'm checking to see that I caught everything, that nothing's flipped over, it all looks good. Checking both sides, looks good to me. Now, I'm going to take this burrito and make sure that you enforce and reinforce on the front and back because if not, you might have some issues when you start tugging on this to pull this burrito through and I'm just going to take these off all right and then you just start pulling this guy out you're going to pull it all through that cuff Hold the cuff on this side and just pull it all the way through. It's really weird how this happens. I I don't know. Okay. I was having a panic moment. I'm like, why is this? the wrong side something went wrong it did not go wrong <laughs> it went very right all right here we go and there we have our pillow just about now you've got two options you can finish this with French seams which means there's no raw edges if you're gonna be washing this if you're hard on a pillow um, if you're yeah if you're hard on a pillowcase then maybe you would like to be sure to do French seams if you don't care you can go on ahead and put these wrong sides together sew down if these are you know purely for decorative reasons put them right sides together sew down here sew down there and you're done turn it inside out and you've got a beautiful decorative pillow but if you want to give this as a gift and you want it to be a little bit more polished, I suggest that you oops, finish the seams. So what I'm going to do is take this over to the ironing board and I'm going to just make sure that I press this really good this way and this way. And then we are going to do some French seams. Okay, for our French seams, we are going to put the wrong sides together 
and we are going to be sure to match these up really well because you want this to be cute right here so I am going to match those up and put a pin in them so I'm going to start at the cuff and then I'm going to pin all the way down and at the bottom because that's what's open you don't have to worry about the folded side that's not an issue I have sewn them right sides together. I'm going to go around with my ruler and take about an eighth off of this. So I'm placing this on, I'm placing the eighth mark line on my sew line. And I'm going to use this small ruler and just, because sometimes I got a little more generous, I'm sure. And you want to be sure that you're not cutting into your already sewn line but we're just gonna take off an eighth real quick and I'm just gonna go real slow I'm in a black section and I use black thread so I can't even see what's happening right here I'm gonna pull this and be sure I'm not nicking my actual <clears throat> my actual seam and we be sure to put the eighth mark on that I'm going to zoom in so you can really see what's happening here. Over here you see I've got this eighth mark line there. I think this is so funny where this lands. So you got to be careful with your prints if you care about that kind of stuff. But this is a kind of fun, whimsical kind of project anyway. So I'm good with it. But... Um, don't, you know, if you're very, if you're very concerned about what body part gets left, because uh, you could get a body part. And now I'm just turning it around to the long side. And we'll do the same thing on this side. Just take off one eighth. Now that this has all been sewn and trimmed, I'm going to turn this wrong side out. And we're going to sew it again. But not until after I press it. So I'm grabbing this. And we're going to turn it wrong side out. And this is just going to enclose those seams, call them French seams, and make this a true couture pillow. Yes, it is couture with all of these sexy men, these outdoorsy men <laughs> on them. <laughs> I'm so tickled. But I'm going to take this and I'm going to run to the corners and poke them out. And then I'm going to take this iron and um, be sure that I've got these seams totally rolled out really well and it does take a few more minutes but this is the difference between a pillow that I'm gifting and that I really care about and just a pillow that's just going to be decorative for funsies but um, this is a pillow that I'm probably going to use and I want it to be nice so I'm doing French seams and I'm just going to push this out because you see how it kind of wants to fold in nope we've got to get it pushed out really well and pressed really well see that because it wants to just be in that's not going to work for us you only have to worry about two sides though the side that's fold that's rolled you don't you don't need to worry about that one so i'm going to take my time and do this and get to the iron and 
don't freak out that there's a full meal over there. If you guys have known me for any amount of time, you know that I sew at my mom's house and I will never stop sewing to eat. Never. So she feeds me. Um, it's a lovely setup that we have here. But anyway, I cannot explain why this tool works so well for this particular job. When it comes to pointing out points like right here, I would prefer to use this clover point turner for whatever reason. When it comes to needing to push out your seams and press them, I don't know why the purple thing works. This is a knockoff purple thing, but I don't know why it works so well. Maybe it's this curve that's right here. I don't know. But look at how good these seams pushed out. I'm hoping you can see them. I'm hoping that my husband's um, pillowcase is not in there. But can you see how good I can't press worth anything, you guys. I'm not like the best ironer in the world. But look at how good that seam. Oh, I hope it's coming out. So now I'm just going to take this. This is now right sides together the way that we usually do things. And I'm going to just run another seam along this seam and closing it. And I'm going to run a seam along the bottom, which is this right here. You can't even tell, like, boy, that tool works really well. Quarter inch seam now, because remember, we shaved off that eighth. So I'm going to run a seam down here, and then I'm going to run a seam down here. And this, we can put a fork in, and I will finish all of that because it will be done. <laughs> usually when you cross over here and you snip something to reduce the bulk in the corners no nah, not for this I will not I think it's I don't want anything raw inside this pillowcase so I will not be doing that but now it is time to turn it right side out and give it another press if I want and then I'm good. You know, again, I still like the point turner. Look at that. No raw seams. That's clean. Does that look good? It does. It totally does. <clears throat> look at this pillow. Now I'm just going to clip the strings that are hanging out and freshen it up with a, again another press and that will be that and then I'm going to show you guys a really quick something to think about it's been pressed it looks great. I love it. Um, <laughs> I can't wait to see what happens when my husband, <laughs> when I put it on his side of the bed, I can't wait to see what happens. This is what it looks like on the other side. <laughs> All right, stay tuned for something that I'm going to show you guys really quickly. So just in case I wasn't super clear when I initially talked about this, if you have some fabric that it doesn't matter, it's non-directional, it's not a big deal, or a border print um, that just runs this way, all you have to do is get 27 inches of that fabric and you're done. You don't have to worry about it. If you have a design like this, where it's running perpendicular, or this direction to the selvage, because there's a selvage up there, um, you're going to have to use some more fabric in order to get it all nice and um, pretty and laying in the correct direction. So again, I have directional fabric that goes this way. I need 22 inches, so I'm just going to 
grabbed by the 22 right here and I'm going to fold it over I need 44 inches I'm sorry not 22 inches I'm looking for 44 inches so I'm just gonna grab it like this and like this and this does not need to be exact 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 you guys have seen how this pillow gets made but I do need 22 inches I mean 44 inches why do I keep saying 22 because I'm looking for 44 I just flip this around I want to be sure that this is all nice and cute here I'm doing a little hangover so that I square it up when I do it and I'm gonna fuss with this and then I'm just gonna cut it and that'll give me the 44 and then I'll switch it the other way and cut 27 okay so I went ahead and chopped that off right there at the 22 giving me 44 inches which is what I need then I'm going to swing it on over and take off all the selvage because I just am and I'm gonna just peek to see where I need to cut and I think, oh, nope, we're going to need to take off. I'm going all the way into the 21 here. And this is folded, so I'm going through four layers of fabric again. Just so that you know. This could be the tricky part. This was the part that I just could not understand. I was like, man, what? I was watching all these videos, but I just couldn't make sense of it. All right, and now I know that from this, from the, from this here, I need to get 27, I need to get 27 inches. And so I'm going to unfold it this way. And I'm going to fold it in half the other way. Because, again, it's just too long to really be dealing with. So I'm going to take these two and make it match. And at this point, you should be looking at your pillow the way that you want to see it on your bed. So everybody is facing me. And then I'm going to cut 27 inches this way. All right, this is where it gets a little funky. I've just cut everything down because I'm getting ready to make my burrito. But if you look at this right here, pillows, when they're on your bed properly, need to open, the pillowcase needs to open toward the outside to where you get into the bed. This fabric does not read the same. It cannot go on either side if you flip it around. Now the cuff is on the right hand side, everybody's upside down, you can't put your pillow on the bed this way. I would just wig out. So. Lucky for me, I did this right, and I sleep on the left-hand side of the bed. Hubs sleeps on, I sleep on the left-hand side, he sleeps on the right-hand side. So I need to be sure that this pillowcase opens to the right. I'm going to show you how I do that in just a second with this burrito. All right, I'm looking at my pillow the way that I want to look at it on my bed. I need it to open this I need to open over here it cannot open over here otherwise it's not gonna be a nice set it's gonna be all turned around so how am I gonna do that I'm going to open this up and the area the side that I want to be open is going to go this way all of my girls are facing this direction and then we're going to roll it up and then we'll pull it through and the cuff will be on that side. Mm -hmm. 